Hey, what is up guys? It's Super User Stan here back with another video. And in this one, I wanna talk about how well Adobe Premiere Pro scales with CPU core counts, especially on the AMD Threadripper or AMD Ryzen systems. Hopefully this video will give you an idea of how many cores you should probably target if you're building for a Adobe Premiere Pro video editing system or uh, where diminishing returns are basically at. So let's get into it. Behind me here is my third gen Threadripper system that I recently built and it's got a 3960X 12 core CPU uh, and a GTX 1080 Ti all on extreme custom water cooling. So this is probably going to be one of the best case scenarios is in terms of cooling uh, when you take that into account. Now on Ryzen Master, you're able to select the number of CCDs that you want to activate on your CPU. So you can actually run the CPU in either a 24 core. Uh, 18 core, 12 core, or six core mode. So we'll be testing those four core counts with Adobe Premiere Pro. Even though the CPU is a Threadripper, the cores are Zen 2 based and virtually identical to Ryzen. So this test is gonna be both representative for Threadripper and Ryzen. So what I did was I took my Canon C200 camera and shot a bunch of random footage of me changing the oil in my car. And I shot it in Canon Cinema Raw Lite. And then I took the, those files and transcode it into 8-bit H.264 so that we had two types of files to begin with for video editing. And then what I did was I created a project using the raw files and then I created the exact same project with 8-bit H.264 files um, and then did a bunch of export tests and whatever. So uh, we'll take a look at the numbers. But before that, I'm actually curious to find out how many cores you're shooting for in your next build. So I'll make sure to put a poll right up here for you guys to vote, either uh, 6 to 8, 12, 16, 18, 24, or 32, or, or something like that. So anyway, on to the numbers. All right, first up, we've got the Canon Cinema Raw Lite in 4K. And what we have here is the 6-core, 12-core, 18-core, and 24-core configurations of exporting. And the numbers you see here is for 4K60, and it's about a five-minute project of sped up footage. So the six core configuration took almost half an hour to complete the export transcode. While the 12 and 18 core, you can see here, dropped almost by 40% you know, in time. 18 minutes and 50 seconds and 12 minutes and 10 seconds. When we went to the 24 core, you can see here, we dropped another two minutes in export time. Now taking a look at H.264, 4K 8-bit, uh, again, the 6 core took 16 minutes and 37 seconds to export. The going to 12 cores, we dropped almost uh, 7 minutes, so 9 minutes and 26 seconds. And then 6 minutes 45 seconds for the 18 core, and then the full 24 core is 5 minutes and 53 seconds. You can see here that the 6 to 12 and even 12 to 18 cores were really decreasing a lot of time, but going from 18 to 24 core, the performance delta seems to be a little bit smaller. So lastly, we've got the 4K 8-bit exporting to uh, 1080p H.264. And you can see here that the 1080p is quite a bit faster than the, the 4K. At six cores activated, we've got eight minutes and 17 seconds. And moving to 12 cores, we see a 47% decrease in time or increase in performance. So four minutes and 23 seconds. 18 cores is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and 20 full 24 cores is just a measly 3 minutes and 8 seconds. What's most interesting here is that you can see going from 6 to 12 core, you have the biggest performance increase or the biggest number of minutes decrease in export times. Then when you move from 12 to 18 cores, you get a little bit less. And when you go from 18 cores to 24 cores, you get even less of a performance. So next we can look at the performance delta in percentage going from 6 to 12 to 18 to 24 cores. The way this graph is set up is the percent time decrease from going from, you see here on the bottom, 6 to 12 cores. Uh, the Canon Cinema right, Raw Light saw a 39% decrease. Uh, H.264 4K, a 43% decrease, and the 1080p saw a 47% decrease. 
Moving from 12 to 18 cores, we can see that the Canon RAW 4K uh, project had pretty similar performance, 35% versus 39%, but the 4K H.264 and then the 1080p export, those saw quite a bit less of a performance increase, 28% and 24%. Then when you go from 18 to 24 cores, you saw an even less 13 or 18%, 13% and 6% percent uh, time decrease or performance increase. So what can you conclude from this? If you work in cinema raw light or any raw, to be honest, uh, the more cores, the better. And it really seems like at 18 or 24 cores or maybe even 32 cores, you'll still get pretty good performance scaling. However, if you're working in 4K 8-bit H.264 as your main media input and output, then it looks like 6 cores, 12 cores, and 18 cores, you're still getting pretty good scaling, but going from uh, 18 cores to 24 cores, you're really only getting 13% additional performance for that extra 6 cores. Now, if your workflow is really just 1080p uh, H.264, there is a compelling evidence to, uh, reason to go from six to 12 cores, and maybe you can even justify going from 12 to 18 cores. But it's really hard, I'd be really hard pressed to recommend uh, to going to 24 cores or above if your main workflow is just 1080p. Now, I don't have a 32 core or a 64 core AMD Threadripper uh, processor at my disposal for uh, further testing to scale up even further. But what I have seen from third-party reviewers, from other YouTubers, is that going from 24 core to 32 core, the performance decrease or performance increase is actually pretty small, or relatively small. And then going all, all the way to 64 cores, either one, your, your application just doesn't work, doesn't like it, or two, the especially the Adobe Premiere performance gap is actually relatively small. Now, based off of the results, I think it's safe to say that the best bang for your buck is probably a 3950X 16 core processor uh, if what you're doing is mainly crunching out YouTube videos or working at H.264 as your output. Um, if you're going to be working in a RAW or anything like that, then that's where the 24 or 32 core processor starts to make sense. Now granted, there's a lot of other factors to consider, such as GPU type or GPU bottlenecking, uh, how render intensive is it versus encoding intensive, uh, what what H.264, H.265, for example, that's that's a whole new ball game, right? Um, so uh, your mileage may vary, but hopefully this was just a little insight into the performance you can expect from AMD CPU scaling. If you have any questions about the test or the assumptions, you can sign off in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them as they come in. And if you found this useful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing for future tech videos. I'll see you in the next one.